When I was asked for my opinion on the CAC CD5, I realised I hadn't reviewed a CD player for years. But the build driven CD mechanism and the DAC function were excellent arguments to go for a review. CAC is a well established name in the high end world. The CD5 is, as mentioned, a CD player that can also function as a digital to analog converter, DAC for short. The CD transport differs from other players in that it is belt driven and that the CD has to be loaded from the top after which a heavy puck stabilizes the CD. I'll get into the specifics later on. Let's first see where the CD5 fits in the stereo. The CD5 is to be connected over analog cables to your amplifier using either RCA or XLR cables. If your amp has XLR inputs, these are the preferred choice for this player. You can now load the CD and play it over your stereo. But if you want to play music from your computer or laptop, you can use either USB, SPDIF or TOSLINK to connect it to the CD5. USB Audio Class 2 is supported so no drivers are needed for modern operating systems like the current Windows 10, Mac OS, Linux, iOS, iPad OS and Android. For mobile devices a converter cable is needed. Any audio or video application will work, but if you want bit perfect reproduction you need to use audio applications like Fubar 2000, JRiver, Audivana, Rune and others. Most of these programs let you control it using a tablet or smartphone. If you want to leave your computer at, for instance, the study, you can use a network bridge or streamer. Here the computer sends music over the network and router to the network bridge or streamer that in turn sends the music over either USB, SPDIF or TOSLINK to one of the digital inputs on the CD5. Time to take a closer look at it. The CD5 is available in silver and black. I had the silver version on review. Being a top loader, it has a sliding door at the top that has to be opened to load the CD. You first take out the stabilizer, load the CD label up, place the stabilizer and close the door. The drive will start spinning to read the table of contents and then is ready to use. The very sturdy housing measures 435 by 335 by 109 mm and weighs a hefty 9 kilos. On the front left the power switch and the source selector that steps to the inputs while in the display the chosen source is shown. USB, coax aka SPDIF and TOSLINK aka optical. There are two filters available for PCM playback, flat with this impulse response and pulse with this impulse response. I'll get back to this later on. Also on the display an indication whether PCM or DSD is decoded when using the CD5 as DAC. When using the CD function the indication here shows whether it is playing or in pause. Further to the right the track number and the track time is shown, unless the DAC function is used. Then the sampling frequency is shown here. Below the display we find the transport buttons. Previous track, next track, stop and play pause. In the middle the infrared sensor. On the right side there is a 6.3 mm headphone jack and a volume control that only works for the headphone output. Time to turn the player around. Here we find the main socket the TOSLINK digital output, the SPDIF digital output, the TOSLINK input, the SPDIF input and the USB B connector to connect to a computer, streamer or network bridge. On the left we find the single ended analog outputs on RCA and the balanced analog outputs on XLR. Since the CD5 offers a fully balanced signal path from the DAC chip to the XLRs, these are the outputs of choice if your amplifier has balanced inputs on XLR. To get inside of the CD5 you do need to unscrew four Torx BO screws, which is like saying no entrance, except for reviewers of course. Inside we see the safety fuse is mounted on a small circuit board together with the main socket. 
The toroidal transformer that is heavily kitted means a linear power supply is used. The needed rectifiers and general voltage regulators are grouped together on this pot. Further local voltage regulators can be found at strategic points at the circuit board. To the left the unique CD mechanism. The idea behind this belt drive mechanism is the same as with turntables. Servo controlled motors cause both electromagnetic disturbance and small irregularities in the RPMs due to varying voltages from the servo circuit. A bit like minute steering corrections you make when driving your bike on a straight line. With direct drive systems, again in both CD players and vinyl players, these cause small but fast variations in rotational speed. If you drive the platter over a rubber belt of good design, small motor variations will be evened out provided the platter has sufficient mass. In the CD5 a 70 mm brass puck weighing 330 grams provides this mass and at the same time dampens vibrations in the CD. This all makes the motor servo work less hard and is easier on the tracking and the focusing system of the laser mechanism. As a result the bitstream will be more constant while there is less burden on the power lines. Again if all is dimensioned perfectly. The electronics that control the CD mechanism is situated on the circuit board just behind it with here the controller for the laser optics that also handles the amplification of the laser output. The transport motor is controlled by this chip. Most of the digital audio electronics can be found here. The ESS ES9018K2M DAC chip is located here, close to the crystal oscillator. And yes, I know there already is an ES9038 that measures a tad better. I have yet to hear any differences in sound quality though. The analog electronics is on the left of it. The output of the ESS DAC chip is symmetrical and remains symmetrical for the balanced outputs, while a separate circuit provides the single ended outputs. The headphones output is on a separate circuit board mounted against the front of the player. The CD5 offers two filter settings, flat and pulse. As you can see at 48 kHz the flat settings offers a flat frequency response up to 22 kHz. The measurement at 44.1 kHz would have been the same by the way. The pulse setting has a mild roll off from about 16 kHz dropping to minus 1.5 dB at 20 kHz. Believe me that you will be unable to hear this roll off even if you would have ears that still are capable of hearing 20 kHz. Normally people that can afford this class of equipment won't and that includes me. When we look at the filtering at 96 kHz sampling, we see the flat filter being flat again up to 45 kHz while the pulse filter is flat up to 26 kHz to drop to minus 1.5 dBs at 40 kHz. So at 96 kHz and 88.2 kHz the roll off is definitely outside the audible band. But why would a manufacturer have two filters and why would one filter roll off this way? It all has to do with the time behavior of the filters. While a flat filter has a ruler straight frequency curve, it has clear imperfections in the time domain. When we look at how the square wave and pulse looks at the scope, we see clear ringing and pre echoes. The pulse filter might roll off slightly in the frequency domain, in the time domain it shows far less ringing and pre echoes. The flat filter probably only was added to satisfy people that have better measuring gear than ears. I normally don't publish measurements, but this time I just wanted to show them so to warn you against two easy conclusions based on measurements. Use as a CD player is straightforward and not different than most other CD players apart from the loading of the CD. The headphone output is variable, the line outputs are not. The display can be dimmed in three steps. You can even program what tracks in what order should be played. Switching to DAC mode is easily done by pressing the source button until the right input lights up on the display. Or press the corresponding button on the remote for direct access. The USB input is according to the USB audio class 2 standard and therefore should not require a driver to be installed on up to date operating systems. 
For Windows 7 and older a driver is available from CEC. Sampling frequencies up to PCM 32 bit 384 kHz and DSD 64 to DSD 128 are supported. Both the SPDIF and TOSLIC inputs do PCM up to 24 bit 192 kHz. The digital outputs only feed signals coming from the CD player. And although DSD is supported in the DAC mode, playback of SACD disc is not supported. I was curious to hear how playback from the CD player and from the Aurelic Aries G2 streamer would compare. Often CD players will lose this battle. My previous TAC VRDS10 with 10 clock and the young modded modifications already wasn't better than the SOTM SMS200 while that player once was a standard. Well, I can tell you that I was not able to hear any difference between playing the CD directly and playing the ripped flag version of the same CD over the Ares G2. That's an enormous achievement for the Ares G2 is the best digital source I have heard up till now. And I consider CD players the lesser type of source. Imagine reading microscopic pits from a vibrating and wobbling disc at a speed of 5 km per hour. It's a wonder it works at all. One of the designers of the CD once said to me that the CD works by the grace of imperfection. CSE here shows that it can build a CD mechanism to perfection. And to avoid questions, when ripping a CD using proper software, errors can be read over and over again until the checksum adds up. Playing a CD live hardly allows for rereading, for the slightest time inconsistencies will be audible. So far for the CD function of the CD5. How does the DAC sound? Compared to my reference to MyTech Brooklyn Bridge, fed from the Ares G2 streamer, the CD5 wins. Character wise they are about the same, but the CD5 is more refined, offers slightly more resolution and has a very, very deep and controlled lows. When I then connect the Syntax 6.2 amp linear power supply to the MyTech, the sound quality is about equal to that of the CD5 with the exception of the deep lows. Here the CD5 is still the winner. Not too many CDs contain lows to hear this though. Hans Zimmer's film music does, as does the recent album of Imagine Dragons. So the CD5 also is a very good deck in its class. At 3695 euros you get a very good CD player and ditto DAC. The MyTech Brooklyn Plus, which is the same in sound quality as the Brooklyn Bridge I use but lacks the streaming function, is about 2000 euros. The Syntax Extreme Performance Power Supply I now use is 1200 euros, so that adds up to 3200 euros. That delivers about the same sound quality as the DAC function of the CD5. I think you'll be hard pressed to find a digital source for the remaining 495 euros. Actually, I'm rather sure you don't manage for it takes the Ares G2 to get the same quality digital sound and that's 8 times the amount. I love playing my music using Rune, but if you can live with playing CDs, the CD5 offers extremely high sound quality for the money. So rather impressed I'll end this video. There will be a new video as always at Friday at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media so you'll be informed when new videos are out. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and thus trustworthy. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.